I would save the union. My paramount object is the struggle, is to save the union. And it is not to save or destroy slavery. If I could save the union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. And this was a letter to Horace Greeley, Washington, D.C., August 22, 1862. In the mid-August, Greeley printed the Prayer of 20 Million, an editorial in the New York Tribune calling for immediate emancipation. Lincoln's reply was meant to be published and read. Everyone would then know where the president stood on Union and the war. Hey guys. All right, so we are here at the Lincoln Memorial. And here's the thing, I never been in this part before. I never even seen this little part underneath the memorial. But this one here, Mr. Miami, hey. was looking for heat. I and he was like <laughs> <laughs> He was like, "Oh, I think we can go get warm in there." I'm like, "What? They closed. It's dark outside." Yo, they're not closed. And this is some deep stuff up in here. Let me continue. Wrong as we think slavery is, we can yet afford to let it alone where it is because that much is due to the necessary arising from its actual presence in this nation. But can we, while our votes can prevent it, allow it to spread into the national territories and to overrun us here in these free states? If our sense of duty forbids this, then let us stand by our duty fearlessly and effectively. For the longest, people talked about Lincoln and the freeing of the slaves. And on one hand, a lot of people pay a lot of reverence to him for freeing the slaves, right? And on the other hand, a lot of people have said the argument that, well, he didn't free the slaves because he didn't believe in slavery. He freed the slaves to save the Union. And so it's pretty interesting reading his words and his speeches and his letters in here. Let us discard all this quibbling about this man or the other man, this race or that race, and the other race being inferior, and therefore they must be placed in an inferior position. Let us discard all these things and unite as one people throughout this land until we shall once more stand up declaring that all men are created equal. There is no reason in the world why the Negro is not entitled to all the natural rights enumerated in the Declaration of Independence, the right of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. I hold that he is as much entitled to these as the white man. Guys, look at this. This is like when they was coming up with the memorial, the idea and the concept for the memorial. Here goes some of what the ideas were. Now again, it's like when you look at American culture, so much of it is derived from other cultures you know we look at these the inspiration of what they wanted to do with the monument and we see Aztec features the Mayan ruins Chichen Itza we see the pyramids Greek African Egyptian we see a lot of Greek influences so much so it makes you wonder what is American culture what are American influences I intend no modification to my personally expressed wish that all men everywhere could be free. And then there will be some black men who can remember that with silent tongue and clenched teeth and steady eye and well-poised bayonet, they have helped mankind onto their great consummation, consummation, while I fear there will be some white ones unable to forget that with malignant heart and deceitful speech, they have strove to hinder it. A proclamation that on the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. 
Negroes, like the other people, act upon motives. Why should they do anything for us if we will do nothing for them? If they stake their lives for us, they must be prompted to be the strongest possible motive. Even the promise of freedom and the promise being made must be kept. The beautiful part about coming here at night to the monuments and to the museums is that there's hardly anybody here. And it may also be because it's cold outside and it's December, but it's certainly a benefit. The monuments stay open pretty late. Um, gosh, I don't even know what time. I guess I'll find out <laughs> what time it closes. But even the bookstore is still open. This is another thing. A lot of people don't know about this right here. But you can hardly see it. But it says, I have a dream. Martin Luther King Jr. The March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. August 28, 1963. So right here is where he stood and gave this I have a dream speech. Right here. Let me show you from this angle. So it's right here. <laughs> so where we to, where we off to next? I'm taking him on a night tour, the DC night tour. Well, I heard some uh, Latin music by the tree. Some Latin music. All right, next stop, Latin music by the tree. That's where they still playing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Instead of Latin music by the trees, we then visited the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial, and one of my personal favorites, the Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial. Did you know that FDR was the first and only president to serve four terms? Washington, D.C. is heavily populated with some of the most beautiful memorials known to our nation. And the best thing is not only are most of them accessible 24 hours, seven days a week, they are free. As always, thanks for watching Fab Fam, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.